welcome to another edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. On this week's episode, we'll be looking at the threats to the palm industry in the UK. We'll be looking at a new disease that's heading towards UK if we're not careful. And we're also looking at my plans for the garden in 2018. As of tomorrow, the 1st of January 2018, you'll be no longer able to bring in a palm tree into the UK or Ireland from abroad. There are some exceptions to that, so let me just talk a bit about that. Basically, last year, uh, a red palm weevil was found in an imported palm from Italy in the UK and was notified to the relevant authorities and DEFRA and the government have decided that because of red palm weevil being a threat to palms in Europe and across across the world in various places that it could become a threat to the UK palms. It's a basically it's a quite a large weevil it burrows into the crown of the palms lots of grubs there they eat the center of the palm and kills it and it collapses. Now because one was found in the UK, it's decided to just blanket ban on all palms over five centimetres trunk size, pretty much all the ones that we grow in this country. There are some exceptions, so you can still get Camadoria palms, Parla palms, etc. Uh, but things like Trachycarpus, uh, Gerbeas, um, Bootias, etc., which are the most hardy palms that grow in this country, those are the ones that are going to be affected. So you will not be able to import those palms or bring them from Europe into the UK or Ireland as of the 1st of January 2018. So what does this mean for the palm industry in the UK? Well basically you might have seen on social media on various websites a few UK suppliers have been hurriedly getting their spring 2018 imports of palms in before Christmas and that is to beat the ban. So there are some suppliers out there that have got stock for 2018 and hopefully 2019 if they've got enough stock but if not you need to really buy your palms as soon as you can if you're thinking about buying a mature palm obviously you can still grow palms in the UK from seed and you can get the nurseries that do grow lots of palms um, but they're all small sizes and you won't get the full range that you get from the, the bigger suppliers so what is the future holding for getting palms into the UK and Ireland. Well, basically, the need to have a two-year quarantine period in enclosed conditions, either under nets or in a greenhouse, and testing to make sure they've got no red palm weevil signs of infestation or any, any signs of the weevils or the grubs. And this has to be monitored in the country of origin, which is normally southern Spain, uh, Portugal, etc. And because of this extra conditions in place it means that some of the suppliers probably won't want to go to the extra hassle of doing that just for the UK market so there will be fewer suppliers happy to go along with the quarantine and all the extra paper that goes along with that so there'll be fewer palm suppliers importing the palms to the UK in the future and the UK is a very small market for the for the palm suppliers. Obviously, most palms go to, to France and to and to Spain and Greece and Italy, all the warmer countries where they grow quickly and, and well. Quite a niche market in the UK. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the suppliers in the UK that that import the palms from from southern Europe will work with their suppliers to get a supply come 2020 when they can prove they've had the two-year quarantine period of these in in the right conditions and they've been inspected so for two years we're not looking at a lot of new stock coming into the uk well pretty much no stock will be coming in as of tomorrow apart from small palms and certain species are exempt from this that don't get palm red palm weevil so if you're thinking about getting a big palm i would say go out shopping very soon because prices will rise in the future even you know, in a couple of years time if there are suppliers about who can get palms that have done the conditions they're going to cost a lot more money because they've had to go to all the extra bother and trouble of growing it in the conditions and getting them checked out and get all the paperwork etc ready 
before they imported to the UK and Ireland. So the prices will rise. So I would say get your palms as soon as possible. Or if you want to play the long game, grow from seed or get smaller plants. There are still the options of getting small palms that are grown in greenhouses in in Europe and then import them across. There are small palms, but they're not the big palms you can just stick in your garden and be pretty hardy. There will be the small, probably stretched, less healthy, robust palms that have been grown inside rather than the ones that have been grown outside in southern Spain. So that is red palm weevil, quite a blow to the uh, palm enthusiast in the UK and Ireland. Let's see how that pans out over the next uh, few months and next couple of years and see how the supply chain evolves and see if we can get more palms into the UK. Thankfully, I've got most of the big palms I want and most of the palms I do grow are from 5, 10 litre pots upward uh, and smaller rather than the big palms. But I do have a few big palms. I'm glad I've got them and, and, and beat the band basically. So that's red palm weevil and what it means to UK gardeners who want to grow palm trees. So now we're coming on to the more serious issue that's potentially going to threaten a lot of UK native garden plants and even crops. And that is the bacterial infection known as Xyella fastidiosa. And this is a new bacteria that's come across to Europe and it's in, and it's devastated thousands of plants in southern Europe over the last two or three, four years. So we're talking about olive trees, we're talking about grapevines, lavenders, some oak species, hebes. And this is a, a bacteria that is transmitted through things like leafhopper bugs, aphids, into the from sap to sap from plant to plant infecting plants via the insects and it goes into the sap and basically what it does it it, it attacks the, the 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 fluid transport system in plants so the the xylem vessels and basically stops plants being able to transport uptake water and, and kills the plants and it's devastated lots and lots of plants in southern europe it's not been found in the uk yet but obviously the government are trying to make sure it doesn't come to the UK. So it, if it does come, it's quite a new um, new bacteria in Europe. So the range of plants that it attacks is, is not completely known. But if it does come to UK, then it could devastate many, many garden plants that we grow. Possibly native plants, possibly oak trees as well. Prunus, so, uh, laurels, cherries and crops like that, the cherries, and also um, so many garden plants, rosemary being one of them. So the government is obviously trying to make sure that we don't get this disease come across the UK. And by doing so, there'll be restrictions on various plants and more checks to make sure that there's no, no signs of this infection coming across the imported plants. But it's not going to be a ban like with the red palm weevil on all palms. It's not going to be a ban on all rosemary and ban on all olive trees. But it's going to be for suppliers and nurserymen and growers to be more vigilant of plants that they do import from Europe. Ideally to quarantine them and to make sure that they're free of the disease before selling them on. But obviously that's unlikely to happen with all suppliers and nurserymen everywhere. But there are some exceptions. So there are a few plants where they're at a very high risk of carrying the pathogen, carrying the, the bacteria and, and getting affected by it. And these include coffee, olives, and oleander, norinium no, oleander. So these plants, these Mediterranean plants, which we get in the UK imported, are the ones where they're gonna have to have extra inspections done on them. So from March 2018, further checks will be done on a, a random sampling basis on these plants that are imported to make sure that they're not carrying the pathogen, carrying this bacteria. Obviously this takes time, it takes uh, resources, and the upshot of this is it could be that prices for these plants will increase in the future. And it's, it is a worry, so it's much bigger, widespread threat to a lot of plants compared to the palm weevil, which just affects palms, which are a very tiny percentage of 
plants grown in the UK. So it's looking like things like getting these big olive trees. Will this trade continue in the future? It's hard to see if it will. With all these extra checks and if they get infected then potentially the government might come harder down on, on these imports and potentially put more restrictions in the future, especially if we do get an outbreak of the uh, Zyella. So that's not really, it's not looking good for a lot of plants that we import and hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't get this infection in the UK. It could affect lots of other plants, especially if it gets into things like the oak population, it could devastate uh, our native oak population. Potentially, it's only been, I think it's only been um, seen in one species of oak in Europe. Not all the oak species have been affected, so it's only certain ones. Uh, so I should stress that point, it's unknown, it's at the moment in time if it could affect the our native English oak. So hopefully you'll see a link here to the DEFRA website which lists all the plant species that have been seen to be attacked by the Xyla fastidiosa bacteria in southern Europe. And if you look through the links on here you'll find all the information about plant passports, all the extra um, quarantine periods for not just for this Zyella, but also for the other diseases that are uh, restricted and monitored in the UK, and also the red palm weevil uh, sanctions have been put in place as well, the ban on most palm species. So have a look at this link um, and check out all the information there. If you're worried or have any more questions, then contact um, DEFRA basically uh, to find out how it could affect you in the future. And obviously for us growers in the UK and Ireland, we just have to monitor diseases. If we see anything such as potentially the Xyla fastidiosa, then we do need to monitor and also inform the relevant authorities of this uh, disease. And obviously red palm weevil, if you find it in any imported palms from the last few few months, which is very, very, very unlikely because basically the red palm weevil doesn't do much below 15 20 degrees and doesn't fly unless it's over 25 degrees and it'll probably die in winter anyway so you're very likely to find a live one but if you do see one you should also inform the relevant authorities of that as well so most of the garden that i've developed so far over the last five years has really been the second half of the garden starting where the jungle hut is and going back to the end which you can't see in detail from this vantage point but it's roughly about 20 metres by 8 metres that area. And so the next stage is to concentrate on the first half of the garden, which is another 20 by 8 metres in this section here. And there's going to be lots of changes made to make this a very enclosed, proper jungly area which is separate to the second area, which is more open with the arid plants in the middle. So this will be more enclosed. So it does mean getting rid of the lawn. And we're going to look at my design now. So I'm going to build a sweeping path through this section of the garden. And it'll mean there'll be a journey from the start of the garden to the middle part of the garden. And you won't see everything all in one go. And I'm thinking that the path would be probably a gravel path rather than decking. So I can do nice curves and it'll be hard wearing for a long time. And it'll be sort of raised areas either side of the path where I'll grow predominantly evergreen plants. So there's a good view from the house of palms, bamboos, shefflers, maybe some bananas as well. And then it'll also mean moving the greenhouse eventually. So the greenhouse will stay where it is at the moment with the path going around it. But in, in time when I have the funds available, I will get a nice cedar greenhouse by the side of the garage coming out to where the stone path is. And this will obscure the view to part of the garden behind but it does mean it opens up the right hand side, the sunny side of the garden for plants. And it also means eventually I'll move the small greenhouse, 
we'll get rid of it and just have the new big greenhouse closer to the house. So more of the garden will be covered in plants and have a really enclosed, lush jungle feel with the shadier plants on the left hand side of the path and the more sun loving plants on the right hand side of the path which will incorporate all the trachycarpus palms that I have down the fence line at the moment. So that is the plan this year or starting to do that this year. So lots to get on with. So early in the week we had our first proper snowfall of 2017 and this covered the garden over a couple of hours. We had about four or five centimetres in the end. And as you can see now, the snow did quickly melt in a matter of hours and it was about three degrees that following evening and night, so no frost that night. And you can see the plants are untouched, even the tree ferns still got the green leaves, so no issues with a bit of snow in the garden. So the plant of the week this week is Euphorbia mellifera, or the honey spurge. This is a evergreen shrub, grow about two meters by two meters roughly, or so I've seen so far. And it's hardy down to about minus ten or so, give or take a few degrees. And it's got this beautiful form to a beautiful shape and with the evergreen leaves it has interest all year round so in, even in the middle of the winter like now it still looks really good in spring it has some unusual sort of orangey brown flowers that smell like honey hence the name and it's just a great addition to an exotic garden and it's fantastic that it's evergreen so you've got that interest like I said all year round Easy to grow in any well-drained, moisture-retentive soil and it just gets on and grows well. You can cut it back, but be careful if you do with the sap that's in this plant because it is an irritant like all euphobias. But it's a great addition to the garden. So thank you for watching Yorkshire Chris Weekly. Hope you like the changes I've made using the new software to make this video. If you have any comments on it, please let me know in the comment section below or on Facebook or on Hardy Tropicals website where I have a link with all my videos as well. And if you want to subscribe to my channel to get all my videos notifications sent to you, if you just click on the Yacht Chris logo in the corner of the screen and you'll be able to subscribe. So next week we'll be looking further into the plans for 2018 and checking up on some of the plants that are in winter storage. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.